Hi there and welcome to this session. My name is Rian and let's uh, start a little project here. So create a document, whatever size you want it to be. Um, I'm just going to stick to a predefined, uh, let's say texture, texture size 1024 by 1024. Um, resolution can be 72 and create. Then uh, let's go over to the grid. If the grid doesn't show up, go to Tool Settings, um, Dockers, and select um, where is it now? Grid and Guide. Guides. So once you have enabled that, you should see a panel down here. So um, select Show Grid, change rectangle uh, to isometric change the angle to 26.5 and 26.5 this should give you a, a two by a one by two ratio um, and what that does what that, what that means is your um, let me quickly select a brush that I can use um, ink uh, let's use the, that one so in essence what it means is when you draw a square like that it will occupy that um, that section and uh, if you draw a rectangle it's gonna um, divide the the right right angles um, in that way so from corner to corner Right, so this, this just makes it uh, much easier to draw um, isometric for games, for instance. So what I want to do is I just want to increase the size of the grid to about, let's make it 40. I think 40 should be fine. And then uh, let's change the color to something lighter. I think that will work. Then... I searched on the internet for um, for a reference image, and I found this house. Uh, um, I typed in uh, witch's house, and I found found this reference image. Um, it looks like a house from a France estate or something like that. So let's use that as a reference to create our um, to create our. Um, Isometric drawing. Okay, why is it not staying on top? Just a moment. All right. So if you're using Pure Ref, um, and you, for instance, click on your your crypto file, and it disappears, all you need to do is um, set the mode from. Let's quickly see. Mode from. Uh, set it always on top. So now. If, even if I work here in Krita, the pure reference image will stay up. Um, okay, so let's let's start off with a rough. So let's call that rough uh, drawing. Uh, let's pick a color that um, that represents what a rough drawing would look like. Or something different than black so let's select an orangey color for now and i'm gonna make it quite light like that all right so let's test that that's perfectly fine now if we have a look at the the witch's house it's made up of some uh, basic forms so let's start off with um, a cube on the one side or a block a box like that down like that that way and then you'll see that I don't, I don't strictly follow the the guidelines the the grid but the grid is there to help me just keep the dimensions uh, or the the, um, the lines the angles um, in line with uh, what an isometric grid would look like then we've got a tower there and the uh, 
what we tend to do is we, we try to draw a cylinder. So we would be using a cylinder for that. My advice is don't start off with a cylinder, but start off with a, a box where this cylinder would need to fit in. So we've got a cylinder like that, or a, let's draw the box like that, draw it up. Uh, my guess is that it's going a little bit higher. So let's draw that from there to there. Even higher like that. Um, and then up, up, and down, and vertical like that. So that our witch's house will, will fit in, the tower will fit in the, uh, nicely like there. Right, so to get the, the pitch of the roof, um, I'm just going to extend it by two more blocks. Two more blocks there and two more blocks there. Connect it, connect it. And then in the middle, you'll see that the roof is... Um, there's a cutaway there. So, okay, let's draw the middle, the ridge of the roof. So the roof will come down like this and on the other side. And then um, that part of the roof uh, needs to be cut off. So let's pick a point there and cut it off like that. So this section, um, this section will look like this. Um, yeah. Oh, that should be fine. Then um, we we let's follow this angle of the roof and just draw a line here. You'll see for this part of that um, uh, I'm not sure what it's called, but the loft. Let's call it a loft room. It comes out like that it goes into the tower and then uh, again we've got a, a pitched roof for for that as well so draw one block up one block up follow that line so find the middle and then we can do the pitch of the roof like that and it will tie into this roof so we need to change the angle slightly yeah Ah, that should be fine. It looks rough, but you, uh, it will all come, um, it will all become clear. So what I want to do is, you, I don't have enough space here now, so I'm gonna select my uh, lasso tool, select that, and then use the move tool and move this out like that, so that we, we get the length of the house in here. Almost like that, and then deselect, and let's connect the, the dots again, so like that. And then there's a bit of a, a, um, a veranda or a, um, a landing. So let's add that as well. Let's make it the width of the, the tower. Bring it up. Bring it uh, up like that. And then into the tower again. Okay, but it, it, it is rounded, so let's make that rounded like that. And then the, the steps, uh, let's make it lower. So using the lasso tool, then the move tool, bring it down a little bit like that. And then let's erase some of those lines. Right, and then the when drawing stairs, it's always best to think of it as think of it as a ramp. So first draw the ramp, and then add your uh, your the flat surface. Bring it down to the ramp. Then the corner there. Then the flat surface. Bring it down to the ramp. And continue doing that until you've finished your your stairs. So that should be fine. We can make that smaller. I'll d divide that up uh, uh, in, a, in a while. Let's focus on the tower for the moment. So when drawing circles or, or ellipses, uh, we want to have a square um, block. Then 
when you divide that up in halves and quarters you get something like this and the aim is to if you look at the length of that line and you divide that up into thirds that up into thirds that up into thirds and the same here you want to have your circle um, cut into that third of that line more or less something like that and that should create a very very nice circle or ellipse so we're going to use that same principle here divide it up and then aim for a third a third a third a third there so now we will have a very nice circle in there I think but let's make it a little bit wider for the bottom at the bottom so let's make it slightly wider at the bottom and then uh, we're going to have the the roof that part of the roof about here all right so divide divide i'm drawing very rough at the moment but we'll clean it up in just a, mo uh, a, a few moments from now so again like that right and then we've got the bigger circle for the roof so i'm just going to extend that a little bit to there and there and there and there and then doing the same sort of thing for the for that roof that overhangs okay it's a huge mess of lines in there but we'll sort it out then drawing a vertical line um, which we'll use uh, as the guide for the middle of the, the roof going like that and then we're going to draw that line down we're aiming for the outer circle that we've created there and the same on this side right right so and then we've got a, a, a two-story building so we want to use this as the the floor in the house there could be um, a storage room underneath uh, but the, the main floor of the house is going to be on this level so we need to divide this up so we use this distance and find the half in here and then this is going to be the the floor height or the roof height for the first floor so this will give us the um, where we need to um, attach the, the um, porch or uh, what do you call it I'm not sure what you call it veranda so let's add that veranda in there and then we've got a, a roof that overhangs this one so just extend it from here like so right and then <coughs> excuse me then we've got all of this branchy type of um, structures in here to to make it look like a, a witch's house so i'm just gonna put the the pillars in there or the posts and then where the, the railing would would go and the same for th this part of the building and where the railing would go like this and down and a bit of a railing in here and down and let's quickly divide up the stairs into smaller steps so i'm just going to erase this again i want smaller steps in here so a smaller step down down forward forward down down forward down forward down forward trying to follow the the angle of the um, of our isometric grid and down 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 okay and then we've got the railing that comes like this let's see where we are so we've we've got the roof we've got the tower um, there's a bit of a, a 
an extension of the tower at the bottom. So again, let's do a block like so, down and like that. And then to, to create the pitch for the roof, we're just going to extend it up, up and down. So, And then we can have a little door in here. Going in a bit. We could even have that rounded like that. Right, so there should be a door in here, but it's cut off by the, the veranda. And then we've got all of those vine vines growing down the side of the building. So let's just add some of that in here. It's going to be underneath the roof. Some of that, and then we've got quite a lot of bushes growing in here and what seems like rocks um, or a stone could be something stony like that right and then yeah the, and the, the house is on a on a bit of a hill so let's just add the hill up there and a bit of ground like that and the same on that side so the house goes further on that side, but I think we're not going to do that. We're going to stick to this side of the, the, the building. Okay, so let's quickly see. I want to bring the whole drawing down a little bit. I'm just going to line it up with my isometric grid again. So that we've got enough space around the house. So once we are done with the, the, the grid, we can create a new layer. Um, yeah, let's create a new layer and, and say refined rough. So now we're going to go in with a slightly darker pencil. We can lower the opacity of the rough drawing. And what we need to do now is refine some of the, the mess or the confusion that we've created here. Um, and here we can start adding a little bit more character to, to the whole thing. I think we can safely put off the grid. Um, so we don't need the grid that much anymore. We will come back to it if, if needed. So just want to, um, we, we have got a pillar here. I'm gonna add a pillar there. I want the roof to go up and then sag again to the next pillar. Right, so, and then the pillars looks like, it's almost like branches and a bit of a tree stump. So it's very roughly placed in here and um, to make it look like a natural, what, what a witch, witch's house would look like. We can even bring this down to the porch uh, or to the bottom. So this could be a tree that grows up in here. This could be just a branch that's standing on this on the veranda. But this tree could have um, roots overhanging the veranda. So something like that. And then we we can connect the the railings with what could be branches that's just hung in here. Right. And then more branches at random. Stuff like that. Okay, we'll clean this up. Okay, and then let's make it look messy and overgrown. So we can have uh, dead vines or roots that grows over and hung, hangs down from the veranda. Okay, and then the, this could be either planks, but I think what would work better is a, th a kind of thatch roof. We, we can add a little bit more deterioration to this. It's almost like it's 
it's unkempt and uh, it's not looked after very very well and then the same for for the roof so let's sag it a little bit then bring it up and the same there bring it in here and we're going to stick to the thatch idea thatch roof so quite rough and natural looking then here yeah, I think the thatch idea lends itself great to a witch's house okay add a cap in there just to keep everything together right and then bring that down Let's bring the tower down again. Thatch thatching in here. Right, and then a bit of a step before you go into the little tower stall. Okay, bring it down like that and. Okay, and we we can start the the rock formation around there. Okay, and then we've got this this bush that grows in here. So it covers most of the rock, and it's going to cover some of this uh, pillar structure or tree structure in here. So. Okay, and then we've got the, you can't see the door that clearly now. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some deterioration to the, the steps. Um, what I also want to do is I want to make this look like it's made of, out of wood. So we, we have the wood going in there, 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 and then this step here. So let's give it some sag in, in the bottom and then not something like that right. it's been well used and badly man maintained the same there Right, and then we've got the support for the stairs going up like that. And it could be a plank that does that. And the same on the other side. So a plank that goes up like that. I'm just going to very lightly draw it and then something like that. Right, and then underneath here we can have wooden supports as well. Okay, and then we've got the vine growing down the side of the building <coughs> and there's a bit of a um, window there but I think let's skip that ro let's rather put in the chimney I'm going to do a round chimney instead of a, a square one I'm going to give it a, a hood like that Okay, and then windows for the tower. Oh, there's a lovely window with a spider in it, so that's going to give it a very, very nice touch. So we 
actually want that spider in there. Right. Okay, so this is the basics and we can start to go to the refined drawing now. Let's add that sort of thing branches, branches, another rough branch as a railing going down like that. Okay. Okay, let's put off the rough drawing. I think it looks good. Let's rather add a window in here as well. Okay. Seeing that this could be a cellar or a storage area underneath the house, we can add some windows that shows that the, the, the space is being used. So, and then we need to add a few windows here. A window that will li li uh, let light into this part of the house, the bottom part of the house. And then maybe two small windows at the top. It's so quick to redraw things. So let's rather redraw that. Okay, so that's our re refined rough. And we're going to refine it further in the next stage. Right, so I've missed a few details, so um, just let's uh, re, re, let's enable the, the rough drawing and add some of the elements that I've missed. So I've missed that this part of the, the building comes down like that, and let's add some of the merging of the, the roof in there, and maybe a little window in there. This one doesn't look good at all. Okay, so try to to think of what what the 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 ellipse will look like here and what the ellipse will look like here, and then bring it down. Trying to follow the curve of the, the the tower. Okay, that should be fine. And then <coughs> we've got some grass going in here. So let's let's have. Um, Stepping stones in here. Okay, I think that should be fine. What am I missing? Let's have a quick look. Right, show grid. That's fine, that's fine, the roof is fine, that side of the building is fine, the steps is fine. I think the stairs are still a little bit too large for the windows, the size of the window. So let's make them even smaller. Um, let's do it this way. So let's make a selection. Right, and then let's scale it down. I think that should be more in line with the rest of the building. Right. Brush, and let's repeat this. So we've got the this part coming in here like that. 
we've got the side of the building coming down there and that should tie up with the rest of the, the building That's looking good, I think. Okay. I think we can close this one. So we've got what we needed from the reference. We're not following the reference to the T. We just we've we've just used it to, to get us to this point so that we have something that's, that's familiar and not too outlandish. But now we can start creating our own. Um, we can use this as a basis to create our own artwork now. Okay. All right, so now that we've, we've got this um, refined rough, we can create a new layer. Uh, what, I, what I prefer using is a fill layer. And let's make the fill layer black, like that. Let's say OK. And then uh, use a transparency mask on that fill layer. And it will come, become clear. So at this moment, the transparency fill is white. If it was black, it will be tro totally transparent, and anything gray uh, will uh, give us um, a gradient between either transparent or non-transparent. So let's invert that. So Control I on the mask, and now it's created an inverted um, uh, inverse on the transparency marks. And you, uh, let's press D on the keyboard to set the colors to default. So when when it's on black, it will erase, and when it's on white, it will add. Um, I want to make the refined drawing a little bit lighter, and let's call this line art, and make sure you you select the transparency mask. Now, if I draw with white, um, I can add. And if I draw with black, I can remove. Okay, and when you select the whole drawing, when you uh, press uh, Control A and you press Delete, it will delete whatever you've drawn. So now, right, so, and to deselect, you press Shift Control A to deselect. So let's get in there and start drawing. Okay, we we're going to draw a little bit more refined now. We're going to make sure that our drawing is nice and tidy. Okay. We can still alter what we've we've drawn. Um, so. Don't be afraid to change things if you think that it it will benefit your your drawing or the artwork. Okay, a few lines in there, and then let's add some here to demonstrate the contour of this thatch roof. Okay. Okay, we want stone senior, so I'm just going to make the edge jaggy, jagged like that, and the same here. Okay, and then the window, we're going to add a lintel for the top of the window. And a bit of a window frame in there. Okay. 
So we're basically repeating what we've done before, but now with tighter, neater lines. Right. Thin window framing there, and we want to have that spider shape in there as well. Something like that. Right. Make the add some jagged edges to the thatch roof as well. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Right, so let's have some of this hanging down to to sh demonstrate that it's it's not looked after. I forgot to add the, um, the roots that I initially had in here. So we've got a root coming out there, a root coming out there, and a root coming out there. And then we can add the thatch in here. So if you make a mistake now, it's easy so, uh, to fix it. So we use white to draw. And then if you want to erase, just press X on the keyboard to, to erase the mistake that you've made. Um, I find it drawing this way much quicker than trying to um, um, constantly switching between eraser and brush. So it's just a matter of pressing X on the keyboard instead of um, finding the eraser, erasing and then back to brush again. All right, and then thatch the cross or overgrown hanging down from this veranda.
So just switching between X, using the X to switch between black and white. White to add, black to remove. Okay, and then the railing. Add some gnarly bits in here. Bring it down. Okay, now we can start adding this shrub. The rock formations, a um, little bit more straight lines, and try to um, keep it angular, not soft. So it should look hard, and um, you can hurt when you bump your head on this uh, this surface. Okay, a bit of texture here and there. gnarly branch in here so what I find easier to do is always draw the things in front first so I don't draw the steps uh, before I haven't done the this branch in here or this railing in here um, it just makes it easier to uh, I don't have to erase um, the stairs once I get to this point so it's just easier to um, draw the things in front first and then um, the things behind that. And that's why the rough drawing is quite important. Um, because it, it gives you the, the freedom to go um, wild on the rough. And then um, when you do the refined drawing, you can pick what needs to stay and what needs to go. Now it's just an easy, easy uh, step to to do the uh, the stairs instead of trying to erase them now. Right, so let's let's add a few cross blades in here. Oh.
right and a few more in here to define it so we don't do, draw each and every grass blade like this we just create suggestions here and there and uh, once you've created enough of a suggestion the viewer should understand what we are looking at or what they are looking at Right, so for the, the stone in the walls, we uh, let's create a new, let's duplicate that, and then select the transparency mask, control all, make sure your, your um, color is set to black, and press delete to remove, um, so basically to remove all of the, the drawing that you've done on the second copied layer. Right, so let's quickly zoom in. We're going to follow the, the grid again, um, but this time we want to create the, the illusion of bricks. So we're not going to draw bricks everywhere. So we just want to create the illusion of bricks. Something like that. Add a vertical here and there. This, this should give us the illusion of bricks. And the same here. Okay, try to follow the grid so in that direction. more or less in so something more or less like that And then for the, the tower as well. So now we're going to try and follow the contour of the, the tower. Okay. Again, not everywhere. Just uh, we want to create the illusion. We don't want to do all of the work. We, we just want to suggest most of the, the brick texture. So I think that that's good enough. Let's have a quick look. 
So that's our brick layer. So we can put that on and off. So let's remove the grit and put off the put off the refined rough. So we're not we don't need that anymore. And that's our little brick house. So I'm gonna duplicate the brick layer again so control j and let's call this one thick outlines select the transparency marks mask control a to select everything and press delete so let's attempt the, the thick lines so i've used the five pixel brush I'm just going to increase that to say about 10. Let's see how thick the lines go. Maybe a bit too thick, so let's bring it down to 7, 6. Okay, yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Sometimes taking your time saves more time than trying to rush things. So just take it slower on, on certain things, especially where accuracy and neatness is necessary. Okay, so with <coughs> without the outline and with with the outline, just just gives it a little bit more definition. So I want to go in. I'm going to keep the brush size at five now. So I want to go in and just accentuate some of these where where things overlap each other. Um, I want to make the line slightly thicker. So, for instance, there, there, and this is closer, so this, this line can also be slightly thicker. Um, I want the railing to stand out a little bit more. Not too thick, just slightly thicker. And I want the steps to also stand out. Um, in this area okay in this railing as well and then where this uh, shrub overlaps the railing it also needs thicker lines okay. and going to add thicker lines to the roof here as well. Okay, and that part of the door. Let's see. So without the lines, with the lines. I'm happy with that. Right, so let's add some color to our drawings. Um, let's, yeah, we don't need the guides and grid anymore, so I'm just gonna. 
put that off. Um, I want to group my drawing layers together. So select all of the layers, control G to group them. And let's rename this group to line drawing. Line drawing. Okay. And then um, lock this layer so that we, we don't accidentally erase or draw on that layer. Right, select a refine or just a layer below line drawing and then press the plus button. All right, let's test, let's test out some brushes and see which one will, will um, suit the style that we want. Um, so let's quickly go into paint and test that brush. Let's see what it looks like. I like that one. Bristle a glaze brush. That one also looks nice. Um, so let's create a new, so let's move that. Tag, remove. So let's add a new tag. Docker storage. Um, how do we tag? New tag. All right. So press on tag, new tag, and rename it something like my art brushes. Okay. Then select. All right. So we like this brush. I like it. Um, and let's add to that to my art brushes. I like this one. It's also nice. So let's add that to add to assign to my art brushes. Um, and then we need something finer as well. I think this one, see what this one looks like. No, so let's add that one to my art brushes. Then go to your, your newly created uh, selection. So that's your, your favorites now. All right, so let's call this color layer. Oh, one and control A and press delete to remove the, the tests that we've done. Um, I think the easiest to start with is the window. So let's make the windows quite dark. I'm going to use a bluish color for the windows. Um, I can make it quite dark. So I'm using the fine brush for the moment. Right, so and then the the let's um, set up some colors for the walls. So let's assume the light is coming in from the right hand side, and our walls is a beigey, muted beigey color for the highlights, something like that. Um, and then press X on the keyboard. We're gonna. Um, Press Ctrl to select that color again, but this time we're going to swing this over to the opposite color. So the the complementary of that. So that's going to be our shadow color. So pressing X for highlight, highlight, and then press X for the shadow color. So so that's going to be the shadow color. Don't worry about painting over stuff like the the roof and that sort of thing. We're gonna we're gonna fix that. We're gonna paint repaint over that again. So so we want all of this in shadow. 
the roof is casting quite a bit of a shadow in here okay and we, we will make that darker and then highlight again and then shadow again highlight gonna make the brush slightly smaller for for areas where I need to go in with a finer brush so it's basically roughing it out we're not we're not con too concerned about getting all of the detail right at this stage so we just want to create the base colors for for each section So I press X on the keyboard to swap between the, the highlight and the shadow color. Okay, and you can see, uh, you can see, you can pick your colors here as well. So, but if I press X on the keyboard, you'll see that's my highlight color, that's my shadow color. So it just makes it much quicker to, to lay in big blobs of color. We'll fix that later. Let's add some shadow underneath that roof there. So we'll get to that later. Um, let's rename that so let's rename that layer to walls base color let's create a new layer and let's call this roof base color right for the roof we're gonna go more of a faded brownish color for the for the thatch so something like that maybe a little bit warmer and then for the shade right so let's do a patch there then press X on the keyboard and control I to color pick that um, and then let's make the highlight slightly brighter press X and let's make the shadow slightly darker and cooler so highlight like that and shadow like that okay this should work fine okay so quickly see highlights right so try to follow the contour of the, the um, roof okay. 
Okay. We're going to blend that a little bit later. So basically just adding the base colors to these. Um, I'm painting over the lines. I'm, I'm going to show you a trick to, to fix that. So don't worry. And that's why I keep the, the roof base on its, sep its own layer so that I can apply a transparency marks, mask to this. Right, shadow side. So it's basically just a, uh, it's either shadow or either highlight, nothing in between at the moment. We're going to add the, the in-betweens or the, the shading once we've done all of the uh, blocking in. So just adding that and I also want this to be that thatchy color, straw basically. Right, something like that. All right, um, let's go back to wall base. I'm going to color pick that, but I'm going to make that darker. So we want and uh, less saturated. So we want this to be quite dark, and we want to base. Uh, we want to hide uh, what's happening underneath the the thatch roof in there. Okay, <coughs> back to roof. All right, so let's add a transparency ma mask to that. So we've got the roof base, add a transparency mask. Uh, and now we're going to press the D on the keyboard to reset the colors to black and white. And using the transparency mask, I'm going to remove wherever, wherever I've gone over the lines. So x to make it black to remove and if i accidentally paint into my color i press x to make it white and get it back again so that way it's just an easy um, a quick fix to to creating um, color fills We're not changing the paint layer, we're just removing the, we're just revealing and hiding parts of the, the, the paint layer. It's not like erasing, it's, it's still there. If I, um, if I disable the transparency marks layer, our paint is still there. It's just, I find it easier to do it this way than to try and paint delicately. delicately. Um, starting with rough and then refining it with my uh, transparency mask. Um, we still need to fix that area.
So um, I'm going to add layers for each of the, the sections, like for instance, um, for each of each part, but not for every part. So in this case, um, I created a layer and called it or renamed it to chimney and railings. And I've added the chimney, a railings. Um, let's continue with the railings. All right, so I select the that and then press X to make a color selection of that as well. And then let's add that. Okay, so don't worry about overpainting, uh, rather overpaint everything and then use a transparency mask to, to get rid of the, the um, where you have overpainted. It's better to, to overpaint and to have white spots here and there uh, peeking through. Um, where you didn't paint like that. Okay, I'm going to press X on the keyboard to give me my shade colors. Now let's quickly finish the, the steps first. We can come back to the railing. Right, using the transparency mask, press T on the keyboard black to remove. And white, white to reveal again. So let's do those rocks. No, before we do the rocks, let's do that that part of the chimney. Uh, uh, of the roof, uh, that cap on the roof. Right, and then transparency mask. That's good. All right, let's create a new layer and call this one um, door, 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 windows, and rocks. So I'm going to group this. Uh, the door, the window frames, and these rocks. So let's start off with the rocks. Um, I'm looking for a warm grayish color for the highlights in the rocks and uh, a bluish gray, dark gray for the shadow. Not too concerned about overpainting in anything. I'm going to use a transparency marks to hide that. That might be a bit too bright blue, so let's make it less saturated. Okay, 
and this building is casting a shadow on the rocks here okay but we'll get to shading in a while shortly we'll get to shading shortly let's add the transparency mask transparency mask press D on the keyboard and remove that 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 Right, so I'm not going to be concerned about that. I'm going to add greenery and the greenery is going to be on top of that. For the door, I'm going to pick a door window. So I'm going to pick that brownish color, make it a little bit more saturated and darker. Like so. And then, all right, we'll get to that later. So. Let's do the the window frames. Right, transparency mask and the same old story adding removing adding removing So far so good so we've got the stepping stones here as well so select your door windows rocks layer uh, color pick the highlight press X on the keyboard color pick the shadow so and let's go in and draw paint that in X on the keyboard to do the shadows. I'm just going to add some inconsistencies and texture on the on the stepping stones very lightly. Press X for highlight again. Press X for shadow color. Too much. X to highlight again. Right. What's next? I think the next step is to add the greenery. So create a new layer called that greens. Right, and then it's select a nice green for us. So I'm looking at something like that coolish kind of green not too dark and uh, not too light then press x on the keyboard to select the same kind of green but this time slightly darker like that x highlight x shadow all right so let's start with highlight color I'm just going to draw over every little bit of green. Right, 
right, X on the keyboard for shade. So just want to make that slightly darker. And remember the house is casting a bit of a shadow in this area. Okay. And there should be shadows underneath uh, this shrub and maybe along the rocks bottoms and maybe a bit here as well. Then for the shrub, I'm going to make that side darker. Remember this uh, tree stump is casting a shadow on the, the shrub as well and then slightly darker at the bottom of the, the bush. Okay, so and then again the same story adding a transparency mask pressing D on the keyboard to erase Right, so flick it on and off to see where you see some inconsistencies. All right, so we, we've got a bit of a um, issue underneath the stairs. So let's uh, address that quickly. Um, I think let's do it on the wall and base color. So color pick that uh, dark color. And you'll see now, because I'm using different layers it's much easier to uh, paint underneath the stairs because the stairs are now on top of the um, on top of everything so see there so just makes it much easier to to break it up into layers I want to go back to the greenery because I see this let's zoom in a little bit I see there's some issues there, so select the greens, um, the transparency mask, and remove. that layer it's this layer so select the color of that window we're just going to add it in the, there and then we want to paint the wall back again so that gives us a very nice base color I think this uh, um, let's start with the shading now so let's start with the wall shading um, see we've got the greens line drawing is there right so let's put all of the colors together in one uh, group so select all the colors Control G to group it and let's call that colors right so, and lock that so, and then on top of that we're going to create a new layer called this shading okay now we select the roof color make it slightly lighter we're gonna uh, drop the opacity and now we're gonna add some shading in here let's pick that brush I like the texture that brush has I like the texture of this brush. 
please excuse any grammar and uh, mistakes I make. Um, English is not my native language. But it's not, not really an excuse to not talk properly. Okay, highlight, highlight, highlight. So we're going to pick the, the shadow color and make it a slightly lighter version of that, but not too saturated. So we go over the highlight area a little bit as well. color pick the highlight and then work it into the shade color ever so slightly So working very light, I'm adding all of this texture into, into the, the thatch roof. Okay, and then we need a bit of a shadow for the chimney as well. Okay, let's see how that what that looks like. Highlighting this area. We need some highlights here as well. Same old story, transparency mask and remove where we don't want the, the um, shading to overwhelm. So let's have a look. So that's much better. Right. Right. So that's shading roofs. Okay, let's push the, the shading a little bit lighter. So just want to select that, make it slightly lighter, more yellow, drop the opacity and make the brush quite big. Right, select the small brush now. I'm going to make it very small. And now we want to 
create some of the, the final lines. Right, drop the opacity a little bit. Don't work too fine though. Um, just add a, a little bit of detail here and there. So don't overdo the, the fine work. Let's have a look, shading, that's looking good. I'm happy with that, so let's stick, stick with that for the moment. Right, so. Right, for this part, I'm, I'm sticking, I'm, I'm keeping on this layer for the moment. Um, select that color, make it lighter, then press X, select that color and make it slightly darker. So then keep the opacity low. And just uh, blend it from light to dark. Oops. Right, so because of the mask that I've created here, I'm not able to paint this. So. No, okay, so I think that's fine. Um, let's create a new one. So a new one. Oh, let's rename that later. So we want to make this part darker and also less saturated. Let's make it even uh, darker where it goes underneath that lintel needs to be much darker. Darker there as well. Okay, for this part, we're going to use the, the highlight color, but just make it darker. So like that. And then that for the shadow. Shadow. Okay, and then time to to blend this. So color pick that the base color and lightly because we've got a low opacity, we can blend it from light to the dark. So I also keep my my hand I'm pressing very lightly so that it blends. 
Uh, let's make that part darker. good maybe we need to go darker here <laughs> and darker here as well so underneath the roof we really need to show a little bit more shadow or ambient occlusion the same with the rocks here And here as well. So let's select the highlight and make it lighter and warmer. much better and we want to create the illusion of these um, stones being um, almost three-dimensional so they they're popping out a bit so, but I'm not going crazy with the highlights on these stones just add a few highlights at the top where they could be light um, bouncing off of the top. So I'm using this color to add a bit of shade in here. Also very subtle. I'm not gonna go crazy with with the shading here. Color pick the blue and make it slightly lighter.
let's have a look. So on, off, so on, off, on, off, on, off. It's popping a little bit better. Okay, bit too stark in there. So I just want to, I'm going to use this color to add some of the shading in there. And then I'm going to remove some of that texture. Yeah, it's looking good. So I think by now you you will understand my procedure. So I'm going to continue refining this drawing and you can follow along. Um, so it's basically the same steps over and over, adding layers and using uh, transparency masks to um, Get rid of the areas that that you've overpainted, and then. Um, uh, but you'll see that I don't use a, a layer for every little thing in the scene. I use layers and use different and paint different spots on that layer um, in the scene. And then um, at some point we will need to uh, merge all of these layers. Uh, otherwise the file is just getting too too big and um, makes the process slower all right so i'm going to shut up and you can see uh, have a look at what i do so just follow along and um, i'm sure you will be able to do the same on your side Right, so for the, the next step, we're basically done with the shading. Um, I'm just going to delete that layer because that I tried something there. So select your line drawing and then on top of your line drawing, add a new layer. Let's call this line color because we're going to we're gonna change the, 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 the line of the color uh, very subtly. So, so select your line drawing. So click select the line drawing. Oh my soul. Right. So when you click on the icon of the line drawing, it will make a selection of the lines or visible elements uh, or pixels um, on that layer. 
then uh, select your line colors uh, layer that you've created and add a transparency mask so what that will do is it will create a mask uh, of the lines in your your drawing from your drawing so select your line colors and then let's let's change the colors of the lines a little bit right so select i'm going to select that color and make it slightly darker even darker um, even more darker so something like that um, I'm going to change all of the colors here as well so just very subtly paint over the the lines to make it a little bit more warmer and less black all right so I'm going to select the, the roofs color and just paint over that make it darker we need it um, the same here going to make that slightly darker there and i'm going to continue doing this with all of my lines So you can see if I um, if I disable the lines colors layer, um, there's a, a, a bit of a subtle change. So the the black is not that harsh anymore. Um, you can disable the line drawing now. Although I think keep the line drawing on, but you can see um, that having the lines colored makes the the drawing so much more um, subtle i believe that this concludes this uh, short tutorial so just to recap we we did a very let's put all of these layers off okay so just to recap we started off with a very rough drawing using our um, grid system let's quickly put the grid system on again um, grid and guides so and we set the grid angle um, the isometry grid to 26.5 26.5 um, after the rough drawing we refined the rough drawing um, and once we we did that we did the, the um, line drawing on top of that um, and then we started to color using uh, basic uh, light and dark colors um, and then we added shading to to the scene and lastly we colored the lines just to make the lines um, more subtle all right, so have fun drawing and painting and uh, let me know what you think of the tutorial and if it helped you uh, with, with this kind of paintings in Krita. If you have any questions, also let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.